Imagine you invested a thousand pounds into the wrong investment and lost all your money. Now I've seen it happen. People got overexcited over a new crypto coin or got into investing because of those holding GameStop or AMC diamond hands. Newsflash for you guys, that's called gambling and not investing. So if that's what you come to this video for, then there are plenty of other crypto bros and financial influencers, get it? <coughs> that will teach you the latest get poor quick ski. God, I'm on fire today. But seriously, in this video, we're gonna unpack some ways that you can invest that first thousand pounds and start to build wealth over time. Let's get it. Also quickly stick around to the end because today I'm giving away something awesome that will help you level up your personal finances for free. Now to help you understand each investment opportunity we're about to discuss here, say hello to my good friend, the Riskometer. This bad boy will show you how risky each investment could be for your money so you at least know what you're getting yourself into from the start. So let's kick things off. Investment number one is index funds and ETFs. Index funds register on our riskometer at low. Very quickly, index funds are baskets of stocks from a particular index. In this case, I'm going to be talking about the S&P 500, which is probably the most famous index, and that is the 500 largest companies in the USA. But there are others out there as well. You've got the FTSE in the UK, the Euro 50 in, yes, you guessed it, Europe. Bon chance, mon frère. Indexes can follow countries and continents and even in some cases are global like the Van Gogh Global All Cap, which holds the top 5,000 companies in the world. So there's a lot of options out there. Now, ETFs are very similar. They're also baskets of stocks, but the difference is they don't track an index. They're managed by a fund manager and that fund manager can pick whatever they like to go in them. Though usually they're themed to a sector, country, or in some cases, a continent too. Investors all over the world rave about index fund investing. And if you're a beginner, it's an excellent place to start. For example, the S&P 500 has returned an average of 10.51% over the past 50 years. Now, if you'd invested a thousand pounds into the S&P 500 for the next 30 years at that 10.51%, you'd be doing pretty well. And that's all thanks to the magic of our good friend, Compound Interest. Now, the reason index funds are so great is if you're holding one, you're always holding the largest companies within that particular index. So as companies grow and some fall off, you're protected in a lot of ways as it often balances itself out. For my own personal strategy, I have an 80% of my wealth in index funds and ETFs at all times. This number doesn't change. And so for the sake of this, if I invested £1,000, say, I would actually tuck away £800 of that into an index fund. But where does that other £200 go? Well, stick around for a bit longer. And investment three, I'm going to tell you. But next up is investment two, and that is investing in yourself. Now, this is the lowest possible we can ever get on the risk meter because when has investing in yourself ever been a risk. This number is absolutely wild. We only invest one to two percent of our total income over our lifetime in personal development. However, the big man Alex Hormozzi recently came out and said investing in yourself can offer five extra opportunities and he's totally right. An example of this could be you're working somewhere and you're paid £15 an hour. However, there's a management course available for £1,000 but at the end of it you can renegotiate your salary and you'll be qualified to do the exact same thing elsewhere, but for £22 an hour. Now that's a £7 an hour increase, which is a 46.67% return. You struggle to get that anywhere in the stock market for quite some time. Now, if we think about it like this too, our working week is actually usually around about 40 or so working hours. Sorry to workaholics, I'm just going on the averages here. So once you've completed the course and hopefully you've got that promotion, you would need to work a total of four weeks to pay that course back and then make a profit on that investment. This is just one example of where investing yourself can pay off. But remember, it can also be for learning a new skill that you use later on to set up your own business. More on that shortly. Or it could even just be to improve your overall health and well-being. All fantastic investments in my personal opinion. Now, investment number three is individual stocks. Now, remember that £200 that I mentioned earlier in the video? This is where I invest the rest as part of my 80-20 strategy. Now, before we jump in, individual stocks gets quite a high rating on the risk meter for me. The good thing about stock picking these days is that you don't need to buy a full share of that company. These days, most popular investment providers, we've left links to some of our favorite ones below, they offer what's called fractional share trading. This means if a full share is £100, you could still invest in that company by buying a fraction of that share, let's say £10 in this case. Now, this has opened the market up for all types of investors like you and me. Now, the problem with individual stocks is that you have total control over where you invest. Now, I can see you looking at me like, why is that even a problem? Well, first, 
firstly, you need to have a little bit of an understanding of that particular business before you invest in it. A shocking fact is that 90% of new investors lose money when investing in individual stocks. Now, why? Well, they don't understand the market and the companies that they're investing in. They're absolutely glued to their apps, watching it go up and down. And when it drops, they panic and they sell for a loss. Now, the key to individual stock picking goes a lot further than your mate Alan's tip after four beers down the pub. I use a system called the four M's, which was made famous by legendary investors, Warren Buffett and Phil Town. Now, the four M's stand for moat management, meaning and margin of safety. So I'm going to break these down very quickly for you guys using the biggest company in the world, Apple, as an example. Now, moat is the business. What's it got that can protect it and power it forward? So for Apple, this is a healthy balance sheet and they've got an ecosystem of products that are completely unique. Management, well, we all remember Steve Jobs, what an innovator he was. He created Apple and is widely regarded as one of the best businessmen of all time. Since then, Tim Cook has done a fantastic job and is a great example of good management. Meaning, you've got to understand a business. What is their offering and where can they take that? What's the competitive advantage? Who are the competitors and what are they doing in comparison to that business? You can literally think of Apple versus Samsung here. It's an example that we're all familiar with. Margin of safety. Now, for me, this is the the hardest part to measure and it's completely relative to that person and the way that they assess that business but let's say apple stock current price is a hundred dollars however after looking at the financials you might think it's valued at 120 dollars so that would be a 20 percent margin of safety you know it's worth more than that but the market doesn't think so right now now i try to make sure that i've got at least a little bit of a margin of safety on the stock before i invest in it but to keep it simple for beginners buying a fantastic business when it drops 10 or 15 percent because the overall market is acting irrationally is for me like buying a favorite stock at a discount. Look, I get it, this can be a little bit much for some. So if that's not for you, then just stick to simple index fund investing. And that gives you exactly the same goal, but less stress and a lot less work. Investment number four is starting a business. Have you got an idea knocking around in your brain that you've been desperate to try out? Over 80% of millionaires are self-made millionaires, meaning that they started a business and they grew it until they were well off. Now for the riskometer, others might argue against this, but I'm actually going to put this down at medium risk. The reason why I've put it higher than what others might say is that 66% of businesses fail within the first three years. However, the beauty of running a business is that it's yours. That money you make from selling whatever it is you decide to is literally all yours. As you start out, it will likely just be you on board working from home. So costs are low and you can also be quite flexible too. Now, starting a business is tough. I'm not going to lie. You need to identify a solution to a problem and solve that with a product. It could be physical, it could be digital, but there are going to need to be a big enough market for you to capitalize on. So do think about these things. That being said, you're in control. A business could become the next big thing and it could also just run alongside your nine to five as a passion project or simply a little way of you earning a little bit more extra cash. All food for thought here, a business is a business as long as it makes money. Investment number five, travel and experiences. Now they say comparison is the thief of all joy, but not with experiences and travel. And this one also gets a low on the risk meter If you're like me, then I find travel and experiencing new things with the people I love that makes me a better person. This has had a direct impact on my daily life, both from a happiness perspective, but also from a mindset perspective too. When I go away, it absolutely resets me, it allows me time to think about the big picture and also get some much needed vitamin D. Now I put this back into my business when I get home and that in turn makes me more money over the long term. As an example, a few months ago, I was completely burnt out. I was working on three businesses full time, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. I really needed some time off. Now I went away with my partner for 10 days to Greece and when I got back I was totally revitalized and ready to go. Sometimes though investing in your memories and the way you feel has such a massive impact on you as a person. It also ends up making you more money too. Now investment number five is art. The art world has taken investing by storm recently by offering what's known as fractional share investing in popular pieces of art. Do you remember that from earlier from the individual stock section? Now how this actually works is imagine I broke down a painting into a thousand different pieces and you bought one of those pieces. You get to capitalize on the rise or indeed fall of that piece of artwork. Interestingly though, it's actually outperformed the S&P 500 as a category by nearly 5.5% more on average a year, which is nuts. So for me, this scores a medium risk on the risk -o meter There are platforms like Masterworks that provide access to some of the top artists in the world. And these include shares in paintings from people like Banksy, Andy Warhol, and even classical paintings like Claude Monet. 
I am Claude. Masterworks only makes money when they buy a painting that actually sells for a profit. So their incentive is to buy artwork that actually makes money. Now I've invested a very small amount in Masterworks, but I like the concept and find them very interesting to go into the alternative investment section of my portfolio. Now more on this next. Investment number six. Last but not least, something that which we couldn't leave out is cryptocurrency. But that gift I mentioned earlier, and I thank you for listening to this far, I'm giving away a free net worth calculator and financial goal tracker worth £25. Simply click the link in the description below and we'll send that out to your inbox in just a few minutes. Highest it can ever be on the risk I mean to simply because of the sheer volatility of the concept and the parts performance of the category as a whole. However, with high risk comes high reward. And that's why there are plenty of crypto millionaires out there. But that being said, they got in there at the beginning. Pretty much everyone I know that did well, they did well for a bit and then they lost quite a fair bit. So you need to have a little bit of luck and your finger on the pulse with cryptocurrency. But I think actually cryptocurrency as a concept is pretty amazing. Digitizing currency and payments so it can move safely through the system internationally, lowering our costs, in theory, keeping our money safe. It's pretty cool. There's obviously a lot more to it than that, but we could make an entire channel out of crypto and I'm nowhere near an expert in it. So I'll leave that to the crypto bros. What I like about it though, is that it has potential as a category. So going back to this alternative investment amount, I allocate a very small amount of money to some of the bigger players like Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's a tiny investment amount. Now under 1% of my entire investment portfolio is in alternative investments. This gives me a good balance and allows me to sleep well at night knowing that I've spread my risk. But again, each their own, find what works for you and go with that. Now, thank you for listening today and be sure to check out our video, Should You Save or Invest? It's coming up next here and be sure to subscribe if for new content if you haven't already and we'll see you soon.